Okay, so today's tomato review is going to be on the plum lemon tomato. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the inside of the plum lemon. Yeah, I'll zoom you back out. And as you can see, it's bi-chambered. And you can definitely see some wilding in the rind. And the seeds are not attached to the tomato. This is a hollow tomato. This is basically another one of those tomatoes similar to the dochua or the shimij tomato. So it's a type of hollow tomato. So these aren't that uncommon, but not many people grow this tomato. In fact, when I went to go look for seeds last year for this, I couldn't find them anywhere for the plum lemon. A lot of people don't want to sell it because nobody wants to buy the seed for it. So I managed to get a couple of my older seeds to sprout, which were quite old, and we have them today, thank God, because I wouldn't have been able to buy them. Now, if I looked hard enough online, I probably could find them somewhere, but in general, it's not a tomato that most people want to buy. Okay, so here's a look at the whole tomato. As you can see, it very much looks like a lemon. It really does look like a lemon. There's no joke about that. Don't confuse this with the lemon boy. That's a totally different tomato. That's more of like a slicer type tomato. This is a hollow tomato. This is totally different. Okay. That's why they call it the plum lemon tomato. Now these have been ripening up on my table for the last two or three days and they're ripened up to a nice rich orange sunset yellow color. Now when I pick them usually, I usually pick them off about like this color where they actually look like the color of a lemon. And that green will yellow up quite quickly. Within a day or two, that'll be fully yellow. I just picked these today. They will really, truly look like a lemon yellow. But if you leave them out long enough, they will start to get an orange tinge to them. And that's fine. That just means that the sweetness is developing a little more. And hopefully that will cause the offset between the tang and the sweet to kind of balance out a little bit. Hopefully that will. I know these tomatoes tend to be a little on the tangy side. I can tell you that. In advance. Now, I, the reason, only reason why I really grow these tomatoes every year is simply for nostalgia or, or novelty or just for the necessity of keeping the seeds so I can trade them off to other growers and, and things like that. But in reality, I really don't care for these tomatoes too much because, again, this is a very dry and chalky tomato usually. All right. I've been growing this tomato for quite a few years. I don't even know how long at this point. I would probably say back when I first started gardening here about 10 years ago that this is one of the first varieties I bought and I've been growing it ever since and then it started to die out like three or four years later. Like I would grow but I wasn't saving the tomatoes from it. So the seeds started disappearing and the only thing I was left with was the original seeds in the package which is what I managed to recover and to get these growing again from the original seeds. So I, I haven't been saving seeds. I'm kind of sorry I did that because, you know, I had to go through a lot of work to try to get this back on par. And now I got seeds again. I'm, I'm flowing again with seeds. And I make sure that I keep seeds every year from one of these harvests. Whether it's a lot or a little, it don't matter. At least I have a package saying plum lemon tomato seeds for 2016, 2017. So it took me a couple of years to get this back. And I got really lucky to get it back. So that's what it looks like. It's a gorgeous type of orange-yellow color it is right now. And again, that's the uh, outside of it. That's what it looks like on the inside. It's got a nice creamy color rind on there. And you can see that skin. is The contrast between that skin and the rind is really sharp contrast. It's almost like an orange. 
So it's a very interesting tomato. I, like I said, I grow for the nostalgia of it. I, I really, you could stuff this tomato if you want. If you really want to, you can stuff it just like you do with the other ones. Eh, it's a little smaller. It's, you are, I'm going to describe the taste in a minute. We'll see if that works with your idea of stuffing a tomato. This is about the size that they get. They might get a little bit bigger and they might get a little longer. I've had them a little bigger than this actually. But that's about the size they get. You can see it in my palm. Okay. That's about it right there. And we're going to taste that right now. Actually, amazingly, this tastes pretty good this year. Whereas in years past, it was more tangy than I liked. But this year, the tang is probably around 30%. The sweetness is probably around 20 So it's a pretty good close to balance. It's not 100% perfect. The moisture is probably somewhere like maybe 25, 30%. And then in between all of those three is just the mass of it, like the matter, the chalkiness of the tomato. It's not that moist. It's kind of on the dry side, but not real dry. It's a little chalky. And the flavor of the rind has a little bit of a tomato characteristic. So you can taste a little bit of tomato in there, followed by all these other effects. But I ate it with the seeds, and we'll try a piece of that without the seeds in a minute. But I'll take another bite, see if it changes. Amazingly, it actually tastes pretty good, eating just like a tomato. I thought it was going to be very chalky this year. It's not really chalky. The flavor of the seeds that has that tanginess to it, a little bit of the tomato flavor, that contrasts with the rind, and it gives you a nice effect on it. So after you swallow, the tanginess kind of sets into that part of your tongue and it really delivers the flavor of this tomato. And it's actually pretty good this year anyway. You could, if you look really closely at the rind, you could kind of see it's chalky a little bit and it is a little bit chalky. But if you eat it with the seeds, it kind of throws that little extra moisture you need in there and it's fine. Yes, I probably would use this in a salad and I probably will use these in a salad this year and try that out. But... For most practical purposes, it's probably just best to cook the tomato, not make a sauce out of it, but like, you know, tomato soup or something like that, it'd probably be best. You're not going to get juice out of it, but it'd be nice to throw in some kind of stews or soups that you would add tomato. This would act pretty good because it's so dry already, it'll probably hold its mass. And of course, stuffing the tomato too would actually be pretty good for this. Let me just taste this rind, see what it tastes like. Okay, so the rind by itself has a very slight tangy flavor. It does have a pretty good tomato flavor to it. Stronger than a normal tomato rind would have. It ha you can taste the tomato in a rind. You don't taste the tartiness or anything, but you do have a little bit of tanginess inside the rind itself, very slightly. It, just the rind by itself actually tastes pretty good on this tomato. Without the seeds or anything, it has a nice follow through. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised. I'm actually pretty impressed with the tomato this year. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it would be the normal, usual, hollow tomato review for it. But, nope, this one threw me for a loop. This one's actually pretty good. I definitely would recommend this. You may have to grow it out for a year or two. Like I said, I've been growing this tomato now for quite a while. I mean, this one's been about two years out of a package from the original seeds that I, that I haven't saved. But this one's a seed grown from the original package, which was probably close to 10 years old already. And so this is its second year. It's climatized, so maybe the flavor is developing after the second year. I'm not sure. It actually tastes pretty good. I, I don't know what else to say about it other than give it a go. If you see the plum lemon tomato online, give it a go. Make sure you save those seeds and try to share them with other people. Try to be creative with how you cook with it. Remember, it's a dry tomato. It's a hollow tomato. It's really meant for stuffing or like making soups with it, really. That's about the best I can say with it. But I'm going to rank this tomato probably a number three right out the gate because it just threw me for a surprise. It actually tastes pretty good to me. I could eat another one or two of these, no problem. I mean, I you could see I got all these other tomatoes I have to do, so I can't really fill my belly up on tomatoes because eating this many tomatoes every day is really started to take a toll on me. <laughs> it's a lot of tomatoes, guys. I've been eating a lot of tomatoes trying to do these reviews. And after a while, you're just like, I've had enough of tomatoes. But this is good enough for me to want to eat another one. 
So I might do that. I'm going to save seeds from it. So I'll eat the rinds from the other tomatoes. But yeah, they're pretty good. I, I definitely ranked this number three for usage and flavor because the flavor was actually pretty good for a hollow tomato. I definitely uh, would definitely stick with a three. All right, so that was your tomato review for the plum lemon tomato. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Take care now.